Hi guys, welcome back to Parsley Sidings, episode four this time. Uh, what are we doing today? Well, the job we're going to do is, for starters, fix the boards down. We're going to then cut the track to size, work out exactly where it's going to sit, where the points will be, and then we'll make a bit of the terrain up. Shall we crack on? I reckon we do. So what we're going to have is multiple layers of foam initially. It's a bit flexy, so I might have to put reinforcing the underneath it in the middle at some stage, but once this is glued on at the front as well, we'll provide a bit more stability. The track I want raised on an embankment. I don't want to put everything just flat on a flat board and the scenery around it. I want to be able to get down with the camera, with you guys, and look at the trains from a more normal perspective that you would see as a person at a preserve railway, for example. So the best way to achieve that is to put the railway on an embankment rather than flat on the board. And as this is already about oh, a centimetre and a half from the edge of the framework already on this side, then uh, I can already shave the ground up slightly. And then with the railway on another inch and a half embankment on top, and then we can build up the scenery behind. Now you are looking from the back edge as it stands at the minute, because it doesn't make a lot of difference. But I can demonstrate what we're going to do. So first off, we're going to glue onto this. I have here because it's foam, some spray adhesive, just ordinary contact spray adhesive used for craft. It's better than PVA because PVA requires the moisture to be uh, to come out and to dry. Whereas because we're talking with non-porous surfaces, it will take an age because there's nowhere for the moisture to go. So by using a spray adhesive, We'll sort that out and I'll put some Gorilla Glue, Gorilla Glue around the front just to bond onto the front edge and we can then look at a bit of central support to stop this board flexing quite so much. To work out where to spray on the foam, I'm just going to stand this up here, you can see the underneath of the shelf now, and I'm going to get a sharp edge. Not a disaster. A sharp edge, have the boards in place here. And we're just going to so it doesn't have to be a pencil because it's fine. And it's just to give us an idea where we don't want to spray. Because we don't want a sticky surface exposed for later on. And what we've also done is newspaper down because we're in the kitchen and we don't want to get in trouble with the boss. So Spray, don't spray, and spray this shelf and let it go off. Some might say I should be using gloves, they could well be right. and we'll wait for that to dry. Now the glue is touch dry on both parts. We're going to use some Gorilla Glue here to put a bead along the edge and up on the edge of the frame here. Although for that purpose I'll just put it in this slot here because then it'll line up. And what it also says we have to do is slightly moisten 
one surface. So I have a brush and a tub of water so we shall moisten that before we stick it together. This stuff expands so it will squeeze out and get in the join nicely. If I can get the lid off. Oh, there we go. Glue. So we're going to start running a small bead when it comes out, one along the edge of the foam. And this goes to about there. So we'll run a bead. Doesn't need to be a lot because it's going to squeeze out and expand. And we'll moisten on there. And we'll moisten along the front edge. And we'll place the pieces together. Press, press it in. And let the glue do its stuff. And I'll repeat that for the other piece. Here we have post specifically for this layout. isn't it? If I can only open Slash the box. Ta-da! We have a power supply. Well that's always handy. But more importantly we have something wrapped in paper. This is the front. I have purchased an Apollo controller. Nice and smooth. Input and output. Simple as that. Power supply in. Two wires to the track. Jobs are good. Have an on and off button. And a nice smooth knob. Now this is slated to be as good as the Gage Master controller. I can't answer that, but this is made in Australia and this is going to fit on the front panel down here. If I just lower you down, yeah, there you go. It's just going to mount in the front of the baseboard. And it's a good little size. And I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Australian made. four screws to fix it to the board. Perfect for this little layout. That way I don't have to have leads and controllers and all that all separate. This will just be mounted in the front with the switch. We'll have two isolating switches for the road in and for the logo service inside in. And maybe a switch for some lights on here if we're going to have lights. So that is Apollo controllers. We'll see how good it is when we get it mounted and wired up to the track. But that's the postal interlude. Let's get on with the board. As we can see, the glue has now squeezed out and expanded out the joins all quite nicely. So what we can now work out is exactly where the track is going to go. For that, we need my Dremel. Now what I notice when people cut the track and they use their Dremel is that they will fit the little cutter in here and then you've got the bulk of the body and you can't get close in and nice and straight so top tip use the flexible thing because 
we now have a much smaller cross section area of the diet so you can cut the track squarer rather than at an angle see what I mean makes a big difference in the angle of the cut in the end of the rail so I'm going to connect all this up ready to go and then we'll work out exactly where the trek would go this is the time we actually put into concrete the track layout and we're going for it right now now I use the large diameter reinforced cutter rather than the normal I can get one separate you know, the normal discs I use these because it's also slightly wider which again adds to the fact that I can cut a nice square end on the rail all the way through to the bottom down there so if you've got one put the long wiggly end on and the big reinforced metal cutter sweet I'll do dentistry as well anyone need a dentist now where we're going to start is the head shunt I have measured the longest loco that I own that I'm ever likely to run on this little shunting layout just for fun added a little spot per pair of buffer stops on the end here and that gives me this long not that you can see both ends it's not long, what's that, about 10 inches worth of head shunt so I shall cut that one first we can see there, if I just bring you in close now, is that we have quite a square cut to the rail rather than a big slashing cut at the radius of where you can get the tool in. So somewhere here, I had it just now, I've got nothing out, so give this scalp. So now we'll just cut through the web. over here off the board cut, cut I need a new blade it's a bit blunt so this sets the first location of some points we're going to be setting that towards this corner here and if you remember I'll get this paper out of the way the next item of track is the right hand point which will go here and this sets up where we expand down the track now as you know this is flexible track so there is nowhere for the fish plates to clear on the bottom of the rail down here and what I see people do they just hack off a sleeper you don't need to hack off a whole sleeper to allow room for the rail for the chair now if we just go here we'll try and get that into focus here you can see there's a square a flat rectangular pad on which the rail chair is molded try and get some light in there as well don't even see that there it's a little square block so just shave that square block off. I'll definitely need it. A new blade. Yeah, I should slice through there so much nicer than that. So now by doing that, the sleeper has a space deep enough for the rail chair and it maintains the sleep spacing so now if I just get another fish plate we can 
and join them both together. Tweak, 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 and we maintain our sleep spacing. And it's all good, and it sits flush. No sliding in and butchering later on. And this will give us where we need to go with this set of points at this end of the loop. And I reckon if I put that there, just borrow that piece of rail here, just to make sure I've got a bit of clearance around, around the end. get a vehicle to go around the side, in this case the pannier tank. So that will go around this end and we'll clear on this end. So I need my pen which I left in the other room. So we need to cut this track here. We'll put him on there. And like that again, maintaining the sleeper space. We want the Y point. Goes on the end here. Which means perfect little head shunt. There we go, this end of the layout, we have the loco servicing. This track here will disappear off here. Sort of like that, so it's not, not straight. On here goes the Y shape point. We have a bit of track to go in there, and a bit of track to go on here. And now we have our track plan of where we want the track to go. What we have to do, being streamlined track, is trim some sleepers out of the way so that we can get this in properly. So I'm just going to come along with my knife and trim the ends in here so that this will sit flush inside. Got it. And the rails line up nicely. So this will now allow me to make the infill piece to go in here. This one though, I'm going to have to cut a sleeper off because it's just sort of works out at the halfway stage. So we use this one here. That gives our two sleepers. Again, we'll trim the rail chair off. fish plates on. And now we have the fun of trying to get four fish plates all on at the same time. Bear with me. And 
this siding will curve around into there somewhere like that and I reckon that's parsley sidings that gives a little bit of scope for some decoration in the yard the little old platform here we've got servicing for the loco coal dock so you know a bit of coal and the track in and out of the scene what this now allows us to do is to model the terrain and because I had the join at this end I'm just going to bring this up here and line it up on there and I'll get another piece to go up on here and I'll bring this all the way up to the end where it would be that lines up there So we now have the track on the board and we can mark the edge of the terrain. sit on there like that. So let's have a look from the front see what we can see. And this is the perspective that you'll get to see. You can get down low and see the train looking up at running board height. Rather than looking down from above as if you're in an aeroplane all the time. And here we have the formation ready for me to glue down. Now I won't bore you with that, I'm just going to use the spray adhesive again and glue it all down. The next video we'll look at securing the track, a couple of wire feeds to it to get that controller mounted in the front of the board and start actually forming the terrain top surface on the embankments here and uh, any other little scenic variations and undulations that we wish to make. So thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time on episode 5 of Parsley Sidings. See you soon. Bye for now.